The 1950s were a troubling time in South Africa. Apartheid, the organized separation of races, was still in place. White people were prioritized over people of color. They were seen as the saviors of a country that would otherwise have descended into chaos. The Defiance Campaign was a protest launched on the 6th of April, 1952, that was organized to try and fight this system, to try and make South Africa an egalitarian state. It was put in place by the African National Congress, a group of highly educated blacks whose aim was to become equal with the whites via peaceful methods. And they managed to have over 8,000 black people take part in the protest by going into white-only areas as a protest against the discriminatory laws in place in the nationalistic rule. After Milan's National Party unexpectedly won the election in 1948, they created a massive social restructuring program which included the enactment of the new apartheid laws as well as the stricter application of existing discriminatory legislation such as the Pass Laws and the Immorality Act. The African National Congress decided that they needed to change their tactics in order to combat the new regime. Before this period, the group had mostly used petitions and deputations to try to peacefully gain a better way of life for the black people of South Africa. From 1950 to 1952, they committed to militant African nationalism, mass action, and to tactics of boycott strikes and civil disobedience. By 1952, volunteers from the ANC, including Nelson Mandela, Yusuf Dadu, Moses Cotanye, J.B. Marx, David Bopape, and Walter Sisulu, decided that these methods were not effective enough. They were the first people to take part in the defiance campaign, going into public areas and demonstrating using the thumbs up sign introduced by the Cape ANC in 1949 as a sign of unity, singing songs of freedom and screaming. When did you uh, first affiliate with the uh, African National Congress? Basically it was uh, while I was a law student. I sat on a seat marked uh, non-whites only during the defiance of unjust laws campaign. We had sit-ins. We had civil disobedience in the early 1950s uh, before the wonderful movement uh, here in the United States. And I led a small batch of, of whites, mainly students, into the post office, uh, supporting the struggle of blacks who were denied uh, equal facilities or integrated facilities throughout the country. They wouldn't arrest us. It was kind of embarrassing. We sat there trying to be heroic and, and militant and the cops wouldn't arrest us. They whipped off any blacks who sat on seats marked mm. for whites only. Eventually we, we, we were arrested. I was taken to court and the magistrate saw I was 17 and he said, oh, juvenile. <laughs> and from then on my name wasn't mentioned and he said, is your mother in court? And my mother stood up mm -hmm. a little bit nervous and quite proud. I'm sending you home to the care of your mother. And that was a terrible slap in the face for this young militant revolutionary, you know, being sent into the care of his mother. So that was my first act, my first confrontation, if you like, with the state while I was still a law student. On April 6th, the 300-year anniversary of Jan van Riebeck's arrival at the Cape in 1952, the first white threat action was taken and the rallies were held all over South Africa. In Port Elizabeth, Professor J.K. Matthews spoke about militant African nationalism and self-reliance. He said, Only the African people themselves will ever rid themselves of political subjugation, economic exploitation, and social degradation. However, the defense campaign was launched officially on June 26, 1952, and it was the first large-scale multiracial political mobilization against apartheid laws under a common leadership. By the African National Congress, South Africa Indian Congress, and the Colored People Congress. Slowly the campaign spread from Port Elizabeth and East London to smaller towns in the Eastern Cape Province from Johannesburg to Cape Town, Bloemfontein, and Durban. During the last few days of June, 146 volunteers were arrested. In July 1504, during August 2015, and in September 2058, the campaign got bigger and bigger until October, but in November writing erupted and the number of volunteers began to fall. However, by mid-December, an additional 2334 were arrested, bringing the total number to 8057. 
These 8,000 trained volunteers went to jail for defying unjust laws, laws that had grown worse since the National Party came to power in 1948. Volunteers were jailed for failing to carry passes, violating the curfew on Africans, and entering locations and public facilities designed for whites only. Their punishments were usually minor, as the crimes were minor. However, as the campaign grew, there were reports of more people being mistreated in confinement and the whippings of people under 21. Most, including the leaders of the campaign, were arrested under the Suppression of Communism Act, claiming that they were encouraging communism. Although the campaign did not achieve the desired aim of overturning the apartheid laws, it was successful in numerous other ways. The resistance won United Nations recognition that the South African racial policy was an international issue and a UN commission was established to investigate the situation. This meant more attention and awareness regarding the issue as well as external support. This year saw crucial as a defiance campaign saw the movement of A and C from moderation to militancy. The campaign also demonstrates the potential power of African leadership and its organizational skills and discipline, which would in the future lead to Nelson Mandela becoming president. This period marked the beginning of non-racial cooperation in the resistance to apartheid, which would be further cemented by the formation of the Congress Alliance in 1954 in the run-up to the Congress of the People. This was the new beginning which South Africa had so long been fighting for. Must you take the A train to go to Sugar Hill way up in Harlem? If you miss the A train, you will find you missed the quickest way to Harlem. Hurry, get on now, it's coming. Listen to those rails are thrumming. All aboard, get on the A train, soon you will be on your 